Hello, it's Delight Channel once again. Every week we are here with a video that we hope helps you along in your journey to living your dream. Thanks for joining me this week and you are welcome. DLI stands for Development, Empowerment and Leadership Initiative and over the last couple of weeks we focused on entrepreneurship made simple. Last week we focused on what do you need when you want to start and I promise that this week I am going to focus on those who are starting off from the point of employment. Many people start entrepreneurship after they have done some time in paid employment and many do not know how to move. For some people, the fear of the unknown is what keeps them stuck. For some, it is just that the road, the step by step that they need to take to get to entrepreneurship is not clear to them and the comfort that 30 days is equal to one check brings keeps them back from wanting to venture. But like you already probably know, it's only a matter of time. So, I hope what you've been hearing these past couple of weeks has encouraged you to take a second look at entrepreneurship. And then as I go through this week's video, it becomes clearer what you need to do. A few things have been mentioned last week. I'm not going to go through them again. Please watch. But what I would like to speak to this week is if you are coming from employment in addition to the things that i shared last week a few other things that you need to do number one you need to put your finances in order put your finances in order do not plan with entrepreneurship like you will start making money the first month after you jump in it's always advisable to put your finances in order make sure you don't have any debt hanging on your head and try as much as possible to have savings of between 6 to 12 months of what you require to maintain your minimum level of living it is very very important if you don't the pressure of having to run your bills can derail you or at best slow you down from pursuing your vision so make sure you put your finances in order number two you need to solicit and get the support of your significant other meaning if you are married you want to be sure your spouse is with you you want to be sure if you have children your children are aware you want to be sure that if you are single your parents and those who can who can exert a significant influence on you are aware. Why? Even if they will not give you anything, the fact that they know the transition you are making helps them to minimize the amount of pressure that they are going to put on you while you are doing the setup. If you don't do it, all you are doing is, is just to be creating battles and wars in di on different fronts that can significantly slow you down or derail you. Make that point number two. Point number three is that there are things that you can do while you are still employed. I said a lot about those ones last week. Go and watch. What I'm saying here this week is that those things I've mentioned create time in the evening, in the night to work on them. Work on them. Develop them. The vision, the mission, the values, uh, what's the name, how to register. Why is it necessary? Because you, still, you are still in employment, you got some steady source of income that can pay for the ones that requires payment, like registering the business, like buying the domain, developing the website. All those things do not need to wait until you stop employment. Develop all those things. It takes those pressures off you. Also, because at this time, I hope, your pressure is not so high because at least 30 days is equal to one check and you have an idea of what you need to do you have a clearer head to deal with all those fundamental stuff if you do not do them while you are still having the shelter of employment when you get into the market there are no holidays there are no lunch breaks it's a jungle 
and it may significantly minimize the amount of space you have to invest in these fundamental creativities that you need to do. Then, you need to build a business plan, not because you want to submit to any bank, not because you are trying to prove to anybody that this thing can make money. If you have done your homework the way we spoke about it before, when you do a good business plan, even if all you are working on are just the commercials, the financials, and the marketing side, you are in a position to see clearly what do you need, when would you need them, and that can lead you to how can you source. So that even if you need to save from your current employment, or you need to find others to join you in your journey, it is easier for you to do while not under pressure. So, you need to have an idea, even if it's six months, if it is one year, build the basic business plan. Let the financials be clear and don't be optimistic in your financials. Be very, very pessimistic. Imagine everything growing slowly. Imagine all the things you see not playing out you are the way you have seen them. You must provide for a lot of slowdown and the unknowns so that if you do better than that projection, you are fine. And if you hit that projection, you are fine. But if you, if you start from a very optimistic point and one government policy or one event in your neighborhood or something just happened that changes the variable that you are working with, you may not be able to recover because it puts everything on a tailspin. So you need to be very, very pessimistic about it so that if you get something better, then you are fine. But before I go this week, there is one more thing I would like to talk about and I'll carry the rest till next week. And that is the fact that having done all the things that we've said now, the next big thing that you need to get, can you guess, is the customer. Not a big office, not expensive furnishing, not expensive location. If you are clear about the service you want to deliver and you have done all the things we've said last week, this week and since we started this series, then even while you are in employment, hire one person. I know many of you will say, oh, there's nobody that is trustworthy when you are not there. But believe me, you need that kind of sacrifice. You may not get the value you need 100%, but if you can do what we've said before and you are deliberate in your hiring, and you are fortunate to find one good person, you may not get 100% value, but it will not be the same as if you are the only one running with everything. Without one person, go after the customers. Start building your customer base. Find a way to start delivering the service. Why is that important? Number one, you generate income. Number two, all, this, all the assumptions and the projections you've made you can begin to start validating so that you know whether they're going to hold true or you have to check them and, re and, and rejig them and prepare them afresh to cater for things you may not have seen. And number three, they give you more confidence if you then decide to go the whole hog as against when you are going out on a, on, on a limb and you are not sure whether what you are doing will or will not succeed in the market. There's still a few more things we need to talk about because now we're already at the realm where we are speaking about when you start, okay? Entrepreneurship, when you start. But there are some other things that can't go into this one video. So I invite you to make sure you join me next week as once again we take the conversation further. I hope I'm making some sense to you. And I implore you again to please share and let's have your feedback as to how much of sense this is making and if you like join us on telegram channel where we can take this beyond this dash that we do and we can wallow in it a bit thanks for being here this week once again as usual don't ever forget that team Mark is still my name and all all i'm trying to do is what make it into difference see you next week and thanks for joining me this week bye